I'm going to read The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Have you ever seen this book? Yes. Yes. I have. yes. So you are familiar with it. You know what this story is all about. I have. So when we get to parts that you know, you can help me then, right? My mom okay. read it to me all the way through. Oh, good. Good. So do you know who the author of this story is? Mm -mm. The author is the person that writes the words of the story. And his name is Eric Carl. He writes lots of cool books. And the coastal off the track. Yeah. This track. And there's a track. <clears throat> this is a really big book. One sunny morning, the warm sun came up and pop! Out of the egg came a tiny and very cat small caterpillar. Did you ever see the very, very tiny caterpillars come out of eggs? Yeah. Did you? They're very, 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 very tiny when you first see them. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate one apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. So on Thursday, he ate, how many strawberries did he eat? About four. Four of them. So he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges. But what happened? He was still hungry. He was still hungry. He's kind of a piggy, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. He likes to eat. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of cake, one ice cream, one ice cream cone, one pickle. I've never seen a caterpillar eat a pickle, but he must have been really hungry. One Swiss cheese, a slice of salami, one lollipop, one cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, one slice of watermelon, and that night he had a stomach ache. Did you ever eat too much and then your belly kind of hurts? Yeah. No. Sometimes maybe mom and dad might say you eat too much junk for the day. Yeah. That, that happens to moms and dads too. <laughs> I get sick and you to get sick. Yeah. I get sick. Yeah, sometimes we do. The next day was Sunday again, and the caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf. And after that, he felt much better. He did. Now, he wasn't hungry anymore, and he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks, and then he nibbled a hole through the cocoon and pushed his way out. And he was a very beautiful butterfly. Did you guys ever find caterpillar eggs out in the out in the field or anything? Have you ever done that? My grandma's tree has a caterpillar or a cocoon on it. Did you? Well, Where's the wagon? I brought a cup. I brought something to show you because, in case you didn't know, <clears throat> well, I'm going to show you a little bit more about these caterpillars and the butterflies first. So, after the caterpillar makes that cocoon, before he does, he turns into. It's really cool to watch. He goes onto either a stick or a branch, and he goes and he attaches his one back end up there. And they have like this little whip that they use to attach to like a stick or a twig or a branch. And they attach themselves and then they come and they make a J with their bodies. And it comes straight down and it looks just like this. And then they hang there for about a day maybe. And then they start to make that little cocoon. This one's called a chrysalis. It kind of goes around their body. 
and usually it's so quick I never see it I hatch we do um, caterpillars every year and I've never been able to see it so last year I put my iPad up and I did this slow-mo so that we could capture it and it still was so fast it was like and it was done it was crazy and then he stands and he goes in this chrysalis then for the monarch bar butterfly before he gets ready to hatch see this little orange stuff up at the top of the chrysalis it gets these little orange bubbles they're like little bubbles almost yep little beads maybe they're like little orange beads like almost like a jewelry and they look really pretty and then all of a sudden it'll turn black it turns completely black before they hatch out and then it starts to get almost clear and you can start to see the wings of the butterfly all in this little tiny chrysalis and then all of a sudden he totally comes out see right here you can kind of see through it well the thing I didn't know the first time I did this I didn't realize that those chrysalis turned black so when it turns black I thought he was dead I thought he died so you picked him no we left him there and then all of a sudden it started to turn clear and we were like "Ooh, maybe he's coming out so it, it's really cool so if you end up doing that and it turns black don't worry it means it's coming out soon and then they turn into the butterfly and it takes a little while their wings are really crinkled up when they first come out and they're a little bit wet but don't touch them let them dry out by themselves and then when they get really open and they'll hang on their little branch or something and then they'll start kind of moving their wings a little bit because they're almost ready to fly and then you can take them outside and put them on a flower and then you can watch them fly away it is so cool if you get a chance to do that a big butterfly. Did you? Did I you ever see a monarch butterfly like this? I saw. I, yeah. I saw. I saw white butterfly at home. Well, I brought something to show you too. Because another thing, <clears throat> this is called milkweed. Have you ever seen these out in the field or alongside the road? Yeah. Sometimes when you're driving, this is a little tiny milkweed. This is when it's kind of first coming out of the ground. This one's a little bit bigger, and then they get these purple flowers on them. And the bees love these because they have nice nectar, which is good because we like bees. But when you see these, and probably within the next bees can couple sting. weeks, they can, you're right. But I tried to find some today, and I think it's still too early. I don't think they're laying their eggs yet. But when you see the milkweed, just take your time and lift up the leaves really gently. And if you look underneath there, they're tiny, tiny, white, round things. I mean, they, you almost can't see them. If you look too quick, you'll miss them. So you have to really investigate, okay? But they're just little, tiny, round dots that you'll see. And those are the eggs. So if you find those, what I like to do is I just break a leaf off. I break that leaf off, and you just do it real gently so you don't hurt the plant. There's a little milk inside. Well, I'll let you show these seeds in just a second. It's really sticky. And then you take this leaf home and you put it into a clear container with a lid on it and make sure there's a stick in there because they need a stick to, um, to make their little chrysalis on. And make sure you put holes at the top of the lid so they have air to breathe because if they don't have air to breathe, then you won't have a butterfly. Um, but then you also want to make sure if you don't have any of this around you, take a few leaves with you and put them in a Ziploc bag with just a little bit of water and put them in your refrigerator. Because then when the caterpillar hatches <clears throat> out of the egg, it is so tiny. It's some, they start off super, super tiny. Okay. And then you'll watch them grow because you have to make sure the leaf is in there and they like the fresh ones. So you have to keep the leaves really fresh for them, and then they'll eat them, and you can watch them grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. Then you'll know he's going to get ready to be in the cocoon when he makes that J, okay? When he, you see him hanging, and you'll see him because it's a day or two that they're hanging on that thing in a J. But it is the coolest thing if you get a chance to do it. You really need to do it. Do you want to come and touch the milkweed? You can touch it if you want to. And that's, it's kind of sticky, just don't eat it or anything. But the caterpillars love that. They, it's kind of sticky. You can, I mean, you can just wipe it off on your, just, you can do this, it'll go away. And then just make sure you wash your hands. 
I don't think it'll hurt you, but the caterpillars, that's where they get all their nutrients and their vitamins from. You don't want to touch it. You don't have to. But it's really cool to do. If you get a chance to try and hatch a caterpillar and turn it into a butterfly, let it turn into a butterfly, I would definitely... Yeah. Do you want to touch them? You can. You can touch the leaf. You don't have to touch the milk. You can just touch the leaf if you want to. See, it's kind of soft in a way. But then when you, so then when you look for caterpillar eggs, you just lift up the leaf just like that. And don't take it off of the plant until you find them, okay? And when you find them, they'll be, sometimes they're on this little vein. These are the veins of the leaves. Sometimes they're in here. It's just wherever the butterfly before wants to put their eggs, that's what they do. But it is the coolest thing. It really is fun to watch it. And then it's really cool to let them go because then they can go and lay more eggs for someone else to find their eggs. Are you? Or are you again? Yeah. <clears throat> oh, and this is this this is the seed pod. If you see milkweed, there's a little seed pod. Do you want to touch this one? It's kind of soft. It looks like it's prickly, but it's not. It's kind of soft. Isn't that cool? <laughs> it is kind of soft. Yeah. Do you want to touch this one? Yeah, it, it feels really neat. It's it's not prickery. You can, you can touch it. It. it won't hurt you. Isn't that cool? It is cool. Yeah. Now my hands are all sticky from the milk. 